Tatsunoko is a company that for over 50 years has created stories and characters that would change the face of anime and receive international acclaim. They were the starting point for many great artists and are widely credited for expanding awareness of anime in the West. Their legacy spans across anime, video games, comics, and film, with a history akin to that of Hanna-Barbera. And it all started with a boy born in war-torn Japan with a talent for drawing and a dream to make a name for himself. Tatsuo Yoshida was born in Kyoto, Japan in 1932. At a young age, Tatsuo taught himself how to draw, and at age 13, he used that talent to get his first job as an illustrator for Kyoto's daily newspaper, the Kyoto Shimbun. At the time, World War II had just ended, leading to the American occupation of Japan. As a result, American goods were heavily imported to the country, including food, movies, music, and of course, comic books. Like many youths of the time, the teenage Yoshida clung to these comic books, particularly the dynamic action of Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster's Superman. As the 50s came, many Japanese artists would adopt the medium, creating original Japanese comics called manga. One of these artists would become a driving force in Tatsuo's career, an artist named Osamu Tezuka. In 1954, at age 22, the newlywed Tatsuo left his home in Kyoto for Tokyo, after a friend convinced him his work would be more suited for a cosmopolitan city. Tatsuo started his career in Tokyo illustrating for children's magazines, but barely made enough to make ends meet. However, it wasn't long before he debuted a wrestling manga titled Iron Arm Rikia, in collaboration with writer Iki Kajiwara. Kajiwara would later find success writing wrestling and martial arts themed manga, such as Tiger Mask and Ashita no Joe. But it was Rikia that turned the duo into an overnight success. A year after relocating to Tokyo, Tatsuo's brothers Kenji and Toyoharu would join him, with Toyoharu helping with art and Kenji acting as their manager. The three made a name for themselves, publishing a variety of manga between 1955 and 1959, mostly in the sports, wrestling, and martial arts genre. Then, in 1959, Tatsuo Yoshida received what he regarded as the greatest honor. Tatsuo was contacted by DC Comics and asked to create a Japanese adaptation of Superman, to help sell the character to the Japanese market. He accepted, and the comic was released later that year. By age 27, Tatsuo Yoshida had established himself, but for some reason, he still felt unfulfilled. Tatsuo had a realization that despite his success, none of his own creations had reached the heights of his fellow manga artist, especially Osamu Tezuka. By 1960, the Yoshida brothers had started working with Toei Studios as subcontractors on a live-action superhero show called Ara no Shisha, or Messenger of Allah. Under contract with Toei Studios, Tatsuo's brother Toyoharu, now working under the pen name Ipe Kuri to differentiate himself from his brother, created a manga for the series, and the brothers took notice of how well the TV series worked to promote sales of the manga. In the summer of 1962, Tatsuo heard word of a presentation in Ginza hosted by Osamu Tezuka. It was then that Tatsuo learned that Tezuka had been tasked with creating an animated TV series out of his manga Astro Boy, and that the first episode would premiere at Yamaha Hall on November 5th. On October 19, 1962, two weeks prior to the premiere of Astro Boy, Tatsuo and his brothers founded a production company that would allow them to unify all of their works under a single name, giving them a stronger presence in the industry and allowing them to begin their own careers in animation. The company was called Tatsunoko, which translates to Tatsu's Child. The seahorse was adopted as the company's logo, since the kanji for Tatsu can also be read as Ryu, meaning dragon in Japanese. Dragon Children is also the Japanese name for seahorses. On New Year's Day 1963, the first episode of Astro Boy aired to the public on Fuji TV. Just like its manga counterpart, the TV series was a massive hit. In direct response to the success of Astro Boy, Tatsuo set out to adopt one of his own mangas into a full-length animated TV series. However, despite his knowledge of comic books and film production, Tatsuo knew very little about producing animation. At first, he sought assistance from Toei, hoping they would co-produce the series and provide animation. Toei had experience with animation from their years of producing animated films, and even ran animation workshops which the Yoshida brothers utilized. Toei was interested in the proposal, but in the end, Tatsuo refused their offer when he found out that Toei would have majority ownership over any animation produced. Tatsuo then reached out to a friend of his, artist Hiroshi Sasagawa, who worked as an assistant for Tezuka on the Astro Boy TV series. 
Sasagawa provided Tatsuo with detailed information on all the steps and processes required in producing TV animation. With that, Tatsuo mortgaged his family home in Kyoto and obtained a sponsorship deal with cosmetic company Kanebo. This, along with the money he was making from producing manga, gave Tatsuo the funds he needed to create his own animation department. And with that, Tatsunoko entered production of their first animated series, Space Ace. Space Ace premiered on May 8, 1965, and pulled in a moderate audience. The show followed an alien boy named Space Ace, who came to Earth to protect it from aliens, robots, and a variety of monsters. Most notable about the series is its character designs, which seem to be an attempt to copy Tezuka's style. The main cast was clearly meant to be an analog for the main characters of Astro Boy, while the scientist, who was actually named Dr. Tatsunoko in the series, sports a bizarre hairstyle that, according to anime historians, was meant to resemble the shape of Mickey Mouse. The show also features heavy-handed product placements. One of Kanebo Cosmetics' subsidiaries was Kanebo Foods, which specialized in frozen desserts and chewing gum. So, whenever Ace is in trouble, he eats special chewing gum that gives him more energy. Sometime after the series finished airing in Japan, Fred Ladd, the TV producer that brought Astro Boy to America, sought to give Space Ace the same treatment. However, Ladd was turned down as TV networks at the time were moving away from black and white shows to focus on programs in color. Ladd reportedly reached out to Tatsunoko and ordered that a single episode be colorized so that he could use it to produce a pilot. The pilot was created, but the show was still turned down. Though the series wasn't a massive flop, mostly due to the limited competition among animated series at the time, in the end, Space Ace was mostly remembered not for its quality, but for the role it played in Tatsunoko's legacy in anime. A legacy that, to many, began on their second project. In 1966, Tatsuo began work on a new animated series adapted from his manga Pilot Ace. Unlike Space Ace, this series would pay tribute to the American movies and comics the brothers grew up with. The concept was a gamble, but the brothers persevered, unaware of the impact they would have on the future of their company and the future of anime. Mach Go Go Go, known internationally as Speed Racer, premiered on Fuji TV on April 2nd, 1967. The series followed young racer Go Mifune as he competed in races across the globe in his gadget-filled race car, the Mach 5. Go's design was inspired by Elvis Presley from the film Viva Las Vegas, and his car was inspired by James Bond's Aston Martin DB5 from the film Goldfinger. Despite the passion felt among Tatsuo and his team, there was plenty of uncertainty with Mach Go Go Go. Only three days before the premiere of the first episode, it hadn't even been decided if the series would air in black and white or color. Coloring would cost more money, and at the time, only a third of Japanese households actually had color televisions. But Tatsuo thought it was worth it to prevent the show from feeling dated. It's also possible that Tatsuo pushed for color because of the information he gathered from Fred Ladd, and that he believed that unlike Space Ace, Mach Go 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 had potential to succeed in the West. Tatsuo couldn't have been more right, and Mach Go 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 made its way to the US only months after its Japanese premiere. Domestically, the ratings for Mach Go 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 were underwhelming. Though the show wasn't a financial loss due to limited competition and a profitable toy deal, Tatsuo's work may have never surpassed Tezuka in Japan, but he far surpassed him overseas, where Speed Racer became a pop culture icon and the definitive face of anime for decades. But this wouldn't be the only Tatsunoko series to take off in the West. For Tatsuo and his brothers, the race had only just begun. For the remainder of the 60s, Tatsunoko would focus on producing kid-friendly comedies, with few shows emulating the fast-paced action of Speed Racer. Six months after Speed Racer's debut came Tatsunoko's third production, Ora Gazura Dado. Gazura was a comedy, and a direct response to the popularity of giant monster movies among young children at the time, hence why Gazura's name and appearance are similar to Godzilla. 
Gazura was about a dinosaur who hatched from an egg to find himself in present-day Japan. The series was spearheaded by Hiroshi Sasegawa, who unlike Tatsuo, found himself more at home working in the world of comedy. Sasegawa's influence was a major benefit to Tatsunoko, as Gazura was a much bigger success domestically than Space Ace or Speed Racer. Regardless, Tatsuo was still eager to make anime with mature themes, and in 1969, the studio released Kurunai Sanchiro, known internationally as Judo Boy. Sanchiro followed a young judo champion on a search to find the man who killed his father. Sanchiro travels from the big city to the wild west, encountering all kinds of bizarre foes. Judo Boy was somewhat of an experimental series, pioneering various lighting effects and combining animation with live action. Despite its technical feats, the series, like Speed Racer, underperformed domestically, but attained a cult following abroad. At this point, Tatsuo was frustrated with the animation industry, and wanted to show the world that he could do more with animation than just children's shows. With a new decade ahead, Tatsuo saw a chance to make a difference. On April 3rd, 1971, Tatsunoko premiered Ketsudan, or Decision, an animated documentary that told the story of World War II from the perspective of Japanese soldiers. With Decision, Tatsuo pushed for deeper storytelling and animation. But on the same day Decision debuted, came a brand new show from Tatsunoko's rival, Toei. This show would sway public interest in Tatsuo's favor, and provide him with the inspiration and clarity he so desperately needed. Kamen Rider was a live-action superhero show that followed part-time scientist, part-time motocross racer Takeshi Hongo. One day, Hongo is kidnapped and turned into a cyborg by the evil organization Shocker, giving him the power to transform by collecting wind energy in his belt. Kamen Rider was immensely successful and popularized the subgenre of superheroes known in Japan as Henshin Heroes, or Transforming Heroes. In the wake of Kamen Rider's popularity, Tatsuo saw promise in the idea of an animated series based around a transforming superhero. Tatsuo brought the idea to his brother Ipe Kuri, and said that the show should take a science fiction approach. But Ipe argued that ninjas were more popular, and that the show should be similar to their earlier manga, Ninja Butai Gekko, which was about a team of ninjas working for the Japanese government. From this disagreement, Tatsunoko's next animated series was born. Sometimes they are five, sometimes only one. The mysterious white shadow that steals close to its prey. They are the Science Ninja Team. Da da da, da da da, da da da. Sora no kanata ni odoru kage. Science Ninja Team Gachaman followed five ninjas equipped with scientifically advanced weapons and vehicles as they fight against the evil forces of Galactor, an organization bent on taking over the world. Drawing influence from Japan's Transforming Heroes, America's comic books, and the Jerry Anderson series Thunderbirds Are Go gave the series massive international appeal. Gachaman's character designs were done by 20-year-old Tatsunoko artist Yoshitaka Amano, who dropped out of high school to work for Tatsunoko a few years earlier. Amano was another figure who'd become a huge asset for Tatsunoko, designing all of their characters and assuming the role of Tatsuo's protege, a role that was becoming increasingly important as Tatsunoko had begun moving away from manga adaptations to focus on original anime animated series. Tatsuo saw the importance of Gachaman early on in development, so to impress the representative from Yomiko Advertising, Tatsuo had the storyboards for the first episode completely drawn and painted. The show was picked up and aired on Fuji TV on October 1st, 1972. The series, which was originally planned to run for 52 episodes, performed so well that it was renewed for another year, and ended up running for a total of 105 episodes. Following the success of Gachaman, Tatsunoko started a trend, possibly inspired by the output of American animation group Hanna-Barbera, where Hanna-Barbera made two types of shows, comedies like Wacky Races alongside superhero shows like Space Ghost and Birdman, Tatsunoko would do the same, creating a roster of sci-fi-themed superheroes alongside shows like Honey Bee Hutch and Tamagon the Counselor. While Gachaman was entering its second year on the air, Tatsunoko would premiere their second sci-fi superhero series, Shinzo Ningen Kishan. Kishan was set in a world where people and robots coexisted. One day, a robot named BK-1 is struck by lightning and gains sentience, leading to a robot uprising. Tetsuya, the son of the doctor who created BK-1, transfers his consciousness into a robot body, becoming Kishan, an android that fights to protect humans. Kishan was well received, but suffered from budgeting issues caused by the 1973 oil crisis and its constraints on the Japanese economy, which sent the show's main sponsor into bankruptcy. As a result, three episodes were cut from the series' projected run. Regardless, Kishan's legacy stands strong to this day, having inspired numerous Japanese creators in the fields of film and video games, most notably serving as the key inspiration for Capcom's popular Mega Man series. 
Following Kashan came Hurricane Polymer. Polymer was about a private detective named Takeshi, who wears a suit that gives him super strength and the ability to transform into five different vehicles. At the time, Tatsunoko was forming a relationship with the recently founded animation studio Sunrise. Sunrise would become renowned in the anime industry for their revolutionary mecha series, and the interest in mecha may be why Polymer can transform into vehicles, despite the series leaning more towards a Bruce Lee Chinese martial arts style than it does science fiction. Several staff members from Sunrise were brought on to work on Polymer, including future Gundam creator Yoshiyuki Tomi who directed five episodes, including one where the villains seemed to do a primitive version of the Black Tristar's Jetstream attack. Only a few months after Polymer concluded, Tatsunoko unveiled their next superhero, Tekka Man. Inspired by the popularity of disaster movies at the time, like Toho's Prophecy of Nostradamus, Tekka Man was set in a future where mankind was forced to venture into outer space to find a new planet for humans to cultivate. Tekka Man was a risky venture due to a jinx in the anime industry, wherein any science fiction show set in outer space would receive poor ratings and get cancelled. This was the case with Space Battleship Yamato, which aired a year prior and was intended to run for 39 episodes, but was dropped to 26 due to low ratings and high production costs. Despite wishful thinking and the tenacity Tatsuo always brought to the table, Tekka Man 2 suffered from poor ratings and was cancelled, leaving the series open-ended. By 1976, having maintained a strong report with Studio Sunrise, the two decided to collaborate on a series. Goapa 5 Godam is a show that stands out for several reasons, but unfortunately none are how well it did. It was Tatsunoko's first giant robot show, and the first mecha anime to feature a girl as the main character and the leader of a team. However, the series was locked in a ratings battle, as it aired in the same time slot as the much more popular robot anime, UFO Robot Grandizer, as well as a popular game show called Up Down Quiz. In an attempt to save the show, the time slot was moved from Sundays to Wednesday evening, where the ratings continued to plummet until the series was cancelled. The burnout was palpable among the Tatsunoko creative team, especially for Amano, who had already created more characters by his mid-twenties than most artists twice his age had. Fanning these flames was the simple fact that Amano was a free spirit, who hated working in an office. He was notoriously bad at meeting deadlines, and would show up late if at all, completing most of his work at home. Tatsuo even had to defend Amano in board meetings, where his termination was discussed due to his poor attendance, but Tatsuo excused him, granting him permission to work from home. Regardless, Amano still felt confined, and while on a company retreat to Lake Sagami, thought about running away, only refraining when he realized that he had nowhere to go. Time Boken premiered on October 4th, 1975. The series followed a boy named Tompei and a girl named Junko, as they travel through time in search of Junko's missing grandfather. Meanwhile, the villains of the series, the Time Skeletons, follow Tompei and Junko in an attempt to steal a rare gem called the Dynamond. The Time Skeletons quickly became fan-favorite characters, and even to this day are commonly parodied in anime the most notable rendition of this being Team Rocket from Pokemon. According to screenwriter Takeo Koyama, he pitched the idea to Tatsuo after he was inspired by the film Around the World in 80 Days. Tatsuo saw great potential in the concept, and ordered Amano to design the characters for the series. According to Amano, he locked himself in his apartment for three days, and when he emerged, he had created the villains of the series. Not long after this pitch, Koyama left Tatsunoko, so the series and its production were led by Hiroshi Sasegawa, and under his guidance, the series exploded in popularity. Time Boken not only drew in great ratings, but sold a lot of toys. After 60 episodes, the Time Boken story came to a close, but Tatsunoko quickly created a second Time Boken series, this one called Yatterman. Yatterman wasn't a direct sequel, but rather a similar show set in its own universe. The Time Skeletons were reimagined as the Durambo Trio, possibly inspired by the way Hanna-Barbera would recycle their Scooby-Doo character dynamic. Yatterman differentiated itself from its predecessor by removing the time travel aspect, although they still somehow managed to meet historical figures, but mostly focused on pop culture references, like in episode 76 where they meet a parody of Luke Skywalker. The humor also changed, becoming way more risque than the previous series. Yatterman ran for 108 episodes, and solidified the legacy of the Time Boken series, which would run well into the 80s. 
The success of the series wasn't a blessing to everyone though, as with every episode of Time Boken, Amano was ordered to create more characters. It didn't take long for this burden to make its way to the screenwriters, who struggled to produce enough stories to fill the network's orders. While Sasagawa worked on Time Boken, Tatsuo was working with animation studio Topcraft on an adaptation of a baseball manga he made called Ipatsu Kantakun. Then, just as Yatterman had started its run on Fuji TV, Tatsunoko received news that would change the company forever. Tatsuo was diagnosed with liver cancer, and was told to step away from his work as the added stress could make the disease worse. Tatsuo refused, continuing to work on Kantakun while supervising Sasagawa's work on Yatterman. During this time, he even began work on a new series called Temple the Balloonist, which he planned to release in October of 77. The series premiered as planned, however, Tatsuo wouldn't be there to see it. Tatsuo Yoshida passed away on September 5th, 1977. He was only 45 years old. Following Tatsuo's death, his brother Kenji took over as the president of Tatsunoko. Uncertainty spread as fans and staff worried whether Tatsunoko would continue to produce shows of the quality seen under Tatsuo's guidance. Tatsuo's motto was give dreams to children all around the world, and Kenji was determined to uphold his brother's standards. As a gesture of good faith, one of Kenji's first initiatives as president was to commence production on a Gachaman compilation film. The film would combine episodes from across the series' run to create one unified story. Films like this were popular at the time, as reruns and home video releases were scarce. The film was a success, and gave Kenji the assurance he needed for Tatsunoko's next project. Gachaman 2 premiered on October 1st, 1978. Around this time, the first Gachaman series had finally made its way to the United States, retitled as Battle of the Planets, where the story was edited into a space adventure serial to capitalize on the success of Star Wars. Tatsunoko was also heavily influenced by Star Wars and incorporated space adventure, droid-like robots, and some very, very familiar iconography into the Gachaman world. Gachaman 2 was more than a sequel, it was a promise to fans that even though Tatsuo was gone, his mission would continue. And one of the greatest proofs of this is the sheer fact that when you ask an anime fan from outside of Japan what their first anime was, chances are high that the first show they'll mention will be a show animated by Tatsunoko. Whether it was Speed Racer, Battle of the Planets, the Robotech series, Tekaman Blade, Samurai Pizza Cats, or Neon Genesis Evangelion. Even children who grew up in strict Christian households might recognize Tatsunoko's Christian cartoons like Superbook and the Flying House series. In 1982, Yoshitaka Amano left Tatsunoko to pursue work as a freelance artist. Amano soon found success illustrating the novels of Japanese author Hideyuki Kikuchi, known for such works as Demon City Shinjuku and Vampire Hunter D. In 1987, Amano was hired by Japanese video game company Square, where he'd work as a character and graphic designer on the first six installments of the Final Fantasy series. To this day, Amano is still doing work for Final Fantasy, but he has also traveled around the world hosting art exhibits. In his biography, he credits his success to his time at Tatsunoko. If I had not received the job offer from Tatsunoko when I was 15, I might not have become an artist. I always liked to draw, but I never thought that one day it could become a real job and today, I owe my artistic abilities to Tatsuo Yoshida. 